Our politics, economy and society are broken. Whatever your political affiliation, there's no doubt that we're in the midst of a great crisis. As Anthony Selsden wrote recently, there was a perfect storm over trust last year. There were bankers failing to understand why the public was disgusted with the continuation of big bonuses. There was the BBC's failure to comprehend the dismay caused by the Jonathan Ross, Russell Brand affair and the vast salaries paid to him and the Director General. There was further loss of trust in social services over Baby P and in the veracity of research on climate change. And of course, there was the crescendo of MPs' expenses. Thankfully, there are emerging policy proposals that start to recognise the multiple crises we face. But what role is there, if any, for people to play away from Westminster, the Square Mile and the Media Village, to take us back to when trust was stronger? To quote Selsden again, we're only going to move towards that more trusting and trustworthy country that I think we all want to see if we stop blaming other people and start looking more to our own actions. I mean us. We have to ensure that our own actions are trusting and more trusting of others. As the old saying goes, we must be the change we want to see. So how do we do this apart from just hoping trust will once more materialise as if by magic? To find answers, we need to examine ourselves as representatives of civil society. Having carried out research and looked at my own life, it's my conviction that one of the major answers for why we are where we are is that in aggregate we do not necessarily operate in committed groups anymore. That within civil society, even if giving, volunteering and voting episodically goes up, active local membership of groups continues to decline. And that's a shame, because in groups we learn what society is. In groups, whether it be a family or extended family, a religious association, a means for those with a common hobby or interest to get together, or more overtly a political and civic body, we learn what society is. We learn what it means to vote or to argue one's corner, to make collective decisions, to accept and tolerate the views of others, even if those views are themselves intolerant, to get on with those who are different from us. In groups, we learn about how we can be generous with our time, our money, our knowledge and networks. In short, it is in groups that we learn what society is. I've had the privilege of being involved in the last year or two in designing a youth national service program where we take teenagers from all walks of life, independent schools and academies, and put them into teams of 12 over a three-month program. What really struck me was that when we surveyed them before and after their period of service, both their levels of being able to trust other people around them and their sense of belonging to Britain went up. That is to say, in their little group of 12 and the interactions of other generations they had during those three months, their little group taught them what society is about. I think that's amazing. In a society full of groups whose members cut across social divisions are health benefits. Crime can be lower, education can improve, the environment benefits, and happiness can be greater. Being in groups, being a part of the big society is arguably, therefore, a public good. A commons worth fighting for and cultivating in its own right, even if the battle to win it back is at times risky and bloody, even if we face opposition and cynicism that it can be done, whether or not times are good or bad. So how do we, the people, find our way back to a world of groups, of greater trust, of stronger civil society? And I say we, the people, all of us, not just the politicians, bankers or social workers. How do we all rebuild civil society and recreate what we're calling the big society in our groups? Well, we need to go on a journey. A journey as individuals, a journey as groups of individuals, perhaps even as individuals in this group, in this room. And others like it, whether virtual or real, where the key ingredient, active commitment to each other and to a common cause is present, gluing us together. This journey is not one that happens automatically for us in Britain today. I've spoken to many individuals lately, many in their 20s, who'd love to volunteer, but find it so difficult. One chap I met recently tried four times in one weekend to volunteer with local charities. The first two were so under-resourced that they never answered his calls. The third one said they had no opportunities. And the fourth one said they had to do a CRB to take weeks. And in the end, he gave up. We need to help each other take the baby steps, and then bigger steps, and then bigger steps still, deep into the heart of big society. Groups also can go on a journey from existing purely for fun and activities such as sport to being there for fighting a campaign like saving a park or a post office to enabling more political and civic ends such as participating in managing a local budget or resources. And ultimately, when such groups flourish, they become something special. 
proving in the words of Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. These are, of course, fine words, but I think as a people, we're tiring of fine words, whether in print or by auto cue. We want action. So our purpose here today is not to form a think tank or a loose and vague movement, nor even to establish a lobby group. Our aim is to facilitate millions of these journeys back to the big society in concrete and practical ways, individual journeys and group journeys, to form a universal mutual, a cooperative travel agency, if you like, that will help us navigate our way back and up. One we intend to be one day the UK's biggest mutual by 2020. We would like to call that mutual the Big Society Network, a 21st century friendly society in which all are invited to be active members. And I'm now going to ask Paul Twyvey, a man who last year got three quarters of a million people to eat together in neighbourhoods all over the country through the Big Lunch, so this guy knows what he's talking about, to outline our emerging vision for this new mutual.